Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk about the worst makeup products I tried this year. I always hate giving a disclaimer. <laughs> I wanted to sit here and tell you why these products are terrible, but I want you to know that there's a good chance that maybe something that works really well for you does not work for me. Part of that is because we may have different skin types. We may be different ages. We may have different expectations or different makeup aesthetics, and that is perfectly fine. And I find that there are a lot of different things that can kind of shift the way we think about makeup products. And my favorite thing to do is to find a YouTuber or a reviewer who talks about products and uses them the same way I do, has the same expectations. Or I look for people who are similar in age or who have similar skin types. And then I can go through and cherry pick from what their favorites are and have a more successful buying experience. My goal is never to have like a bin full of products that don't work. I don't ever go to the store going, this looks like a hot mess, let's try it. <laughs> that is not the sort of person I am because I really do wanna spend my dollars wisely. And I thought these were going to be good purchases. They just weren't. I am not going to categorize these. I'm just going to pull them out and we'll start from there. So the first thing in here is this. This was a new launch this year. This is the highlighter from Essence. I tried a couple of different cheek products from Essence this year. And this one just does not look beautiful on my 40, well, nearly 48 year old skin. I think that this would be beautiful on skin that is not quite as textured, it just like accentuated every single line and crinkle in my face. And that's why this didn't work for me. And I think that this might be great for my 14 year old daughter, just not for me. Another product from Essence that kind of let me down was this. I had some pretty decent success with their smaller six pan eyeshadow palettes, um, but this is one of their travel palettes. This is called Hello Berlin. And I thought that the color story in here was really pretty. I love greens like this. I like that we have a lot of mattes. I thought that the metallics, you know, would be pretty. It turns out it's very dusty, very dusty. And um, these darker shades over here that I really wanted to love ended up being a little bit patchy and they did not last well all day. Now, here's where I tell you, I usually don't use an eyeshadow primer. The first time I tried these, I didn't use an eyeshadow primer. The second time I tried these, I did, and I still had problems with them just not being fabulous. Are they bad? No. Can you make it work? Probably. Do I want to work that hard? Mm -mm. So for me, the formula, it, it wasn't the color story, it wasn't the colors themselves, it was more the formula that didn't hold tight and create a beautiful all day look. Here is something that when I tried it for the first time, I really liked it. And the more and more I continued to use it, especially after the seasons changed, it all went downhill really fast. And it's this. Oh, I wanted to love this so much. This is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I have the shade number fair two. All right, I have given this some really good use. You can see there are spots of hard pan right along here. That is a problem for me and I have been in here. But the problem that I've had with this, when I got this, was it August or September? It was still warm where I lived. It was still warm and my skin was like in a very different place and I didn't need like a lot of this. This is a very, very emollient and very, heavy like foundation. The other problem I have is that this shade in number two is definitely, do you see the difference between here and here? It's too dark for me. And I got this one because it seemed more of a neutral undertone and the shade number one looked more pink. There may not be a shade for me in this. And for me, the reason that I don't like this is the foundation. This texture, I feel like I'm spreading softened butter on my face. And it's very glowy, very glowy, but as the seasons change, what worked well for me in the warmer months turned into catching on to all of my dry patches. And I didn't even know I had dry patches. I'm pretty good about exfoliating once to twice a week. I'm really good at making sure my skin is really hydrated, especially during these colder months. But when I try this again in November, mm -mm. I tried it again this month, uh-uh, it looks terrible. 
I do really like the powder, but I'm having a hard time with the fact that I'm getting hard pan all throughout here. Part of it is this is so emollient. This is like so crazy glowy that I touch a brush into the powder and then I do this and I go back into the powder and the little particles of foundation that are on the brush from touching this foundation hit the powder instant hard pan. And so I have to go in with a piece of tape to pick up those layers of hard pan to keep using it, but I'm just wasting product that way. This is something where if I had just this in a compact, I would use it. I actually really like it. It doesn't work underneath my eye, but it's a good like overall setting powder. This is what makes this just like, uh-uh, no, no. And I, I feel like I might be able to get some use out of it, you know, come warmer months. But after seeing what it did in the winter, I'm just kind of like, uh, uh. Another foundation that was just terrible, and this might be the worst one I tried this year, is this. I really love the Age Perfect Serum Foundation. That is beautiful. This balm, mm-mm. Okay, here's what's interesting. Oh, ooh, I haven't opened it up in a long time. Look, it cracked. What is going on with this? But do you see how orange this is? Do you see, do you see how this is not my shade? And this is the lightest shade they make. This is Fair 10. What's weird about this line is they have Fair 10, Fair 20, Light 10, Light 20, Medium 10, Medium 20. And the fact that you're giving, I know you're saying it's light or medium or deep, but that you're giving everything the same number, 10 or 20, it can get really confusing if you're at the store. Now I know we should all be paying more attention when we're picking products from the shelves, but come on, throw me a bone and, and make it go numerically or give them all different names. You know, one is fair, one is fair light, one is light, one is light medium. Like make it just that much easier on me, okay? The older I get, the more I like, I don't have time to really stop and smell the roses and I gotta go. <laughs> and I think that was part of it. When I reviewed this product, and I'll leave the link to that review in my description box, people were coming for me because I did not put this on with my fingers. The directions say to put it on with your fingers, but I'm just gonna tell you, when it comes to makeup, Makeup is one of those things that if you, you like to use fingers, a sponge, a brush, I believe a foundation product like this should be able to be applied with anything. Sometimes you'll get better results with something else, but I tried it in that video with a sponge and then later with my fingers and I didn't see any difference in the way it worked for me. This is also supposed to be a product that it has a lot of skincare in it and over time it's supposed to reduce the look of fine lines, it's supposed to be blurring, it's supposed to be hydrating. I could see where it would be hydrating, but people said that this diminished the look of their pores and their fine lines. That's what the L'Oreal website says. This did nothing more than accentuate every single line I had, especially right in through here. Even after I powdered it, this was so emollient that it just like settled right in. We're like, we live here now. And there's nothing worse than, you know, making expressions throughout the day and then finding that not the right color for your skin, like collecting in little orange lines right across my forehead or right here around my crow's feet or in my nasal labial folds. I have no time for that. I have no time for that. Hydrating? Yeah. But do I want to look like an Oompa Loompa? No, no, I don't. Half of my hate for this product is that there is not an adequate shade range. I wish L'Oreal would make a wider range of shades in their Age Perfect line. I feel like even their serum foundation, the lightest one is still too dark for me, but that one is not quite, it's not this orange. <laughs> it's nowhere near this color. But aside from the color match, this did not do what the product was claiming to do. It didn't smooth my lines. It didn't minimize my pores. It didn't look flawless. It, it's supposed to look like beautiful, hydrated, flawless skin. This is not the sort of product that made me want to reach for it daily, despite not being the correct shade for me. There are other products that I have that I know aren't the right shade, and I still am like, I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna bronze it. I'm gonna use a lighter powder. I'm gonna mix it with another foundation. Like, I love the way the product looks on my skin or wears so well that I'm willing to like go the extra mile to make something that is not really beautiful into something that I can use. This was not that product for me. And mm. another product that I know doesn't work for me 
And it, a lot of it is, I think, my age. My age and the texture of my skin at this point. It was that new camo powder foundation from e.l.f. I heard nothing but rave reviews. People really loved it. And I feel like there's, there's something that happened to my skin over the last two, maybe three years. I went from being able to handle something that was slightly drier, something that wasn't as creamy, and all of my texture has just like been compounded like 100%. Like I have more lines in my forehead. I have more fine lines and wrinkles here. Um, my skin uh, feels a little bit thinner, a little bit drier. And the minute I put something that is a really heavy coverage foundation, that powder foundation from e.l.f. is so heavy. It might look beautiful and flawless on younger skin, but on me, it just looked a mess. And I tried it you know, with the little puff that it comes with. I tried it with a brush to thin it out. I tried it like in a multitude of ways and I just could not get it to work for me without looking like a crazy person. And it dried my skin out. I It brought all of my texture to the surface. It made me look a decade older than I was. It just was not good. That one was like a no-go for me. Earlier this year, I had very few products from Fenty. I know a lot of people love the brand. They think it's fantastic. I have not been really inspired to purchase a lot from them, but I saw an Instagram ad uh, this spring where they had a set of five products for $35. I was like, that's a great way to try it. And I'll tell you two of the products that came in there, they're not for me. First of all, this diamond balm is how many carats? I think this is a product, either you love it or you hate it. Either it's for you or it's not. My daughter wants it, so I'm gonna let her have it. But it's a really pretty wet looking highlighter, but it ends up looking like little tiny bits of sparkle. And as someone who's almost 50, something like this feels a little, I don't know, it feels like Claire's makeup. And I'm not saying that it is, but on my skin, it looks like I'm trying to be younger than I am. I obviously love sparkle. This works really pretty as an inner corner highlight, but how am I ever going to get through a pan this big? using it only as an inner corner highlight. That is not gonna work for me. So I'm gonna pass this on to my 14 year old. She's gonna love it. I thought this was gonna be great. I really was having a moment with rose toned eyeshadows. So I got this um, snap shadow in number four, which is kind of like the pinks, but this shade especially, I don't, I don't know. This shade was weird. You see how pretty it is right here? To get it on the eye, I can't pick it up with a brush and get it to look like this. I find that it has a lot of little pieces that want to fall out. So to get that to not happen, I press it in. And the more you press it in, it ends up changing. Do you see how you have like all the sparkle here? And then instead of being kind of like a rusty rose color, it ends up turning orange. I, I don't know. The texture of this is weird. It kind of clumps up. I could not get this shadow to work for me. Um, the other problem I had, this bright fuchsia shade here was very patchy. And these two guys over here were the most usable, but they were just kind of like, eh. They weren't bad, but they weren't amazing. When I try a new product, I want it to be really good because I have so many others that are really good. I don't have time for something that's just, eh. Especially when I have problems with something that's really patchy and something that the texture just doesn't work. This made me think that I'm never going to buy another eyeshadow product from Fenty. I didn't buy this at the same time. I got this later in the summer when it came out. This is the Poutsicle Lip Stain. And it's one of those products that's kind of like a gloss. It's kind of like a stain. And I really wanted to love it. But you know what? Me and lip stains, we don't get along. The older I get, the more I find that products like this end up... My lips tend to be dry. I am forever with a you know hydrating lip product on them. Sometimes it's a lipstick, sometimes it's a lip gloss, sometimes it's a balm, sometimes it's a clear situation. I always need something on my lips. And this looks like it'd be really pretty and really juicy. And yes, it does create a stain when you wipe it off. Okay, the problem I had with this was that this got into all of those fine lines that I have on my lips and it just emphasize where like the skin like dips into a line and I had more color in those lines. So I had all of these lines on my lips 
And then as I kept trying to put more product on to keep it hydrated, it dried my lips out. I think that this product would be great for somebody who has fuller, plumper lips than I do. I do have lines in my lips. That's just where I'm at right now. Um, and that's okay, but I don't want something like this to settle into those lines to accentuate them. And then on top of that, to dry my lips out. This was not the beautiful, juicy, glossy stain that I was hoping for. This was a no for me. These are the Danessa Myricks Infinite Chrome Flakes. I love the chrome pencil. The eyeliner is beautiful. And I love the idea of this oh so much. I've kept this little guy here to kind of make sure it doesn't get too dried out, but I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. This is a little pot of what feels like goo. And look, look at that. I want this to work every time I pull it out. But I'll tell you the problem I have with this. I mean, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Do you see how there are areas where it's a little bit patchy and we've got a little bit more product? The more I try and spread it out, the more problem I have. The more I feel like it kind of grabs onto parts of itself and then takes it along to someplace else. So instead of like smoothing out, do you see how now there's no product here just by rubbing it? There is... I, maybe it's because I'm not a makeup artist. I don't know how to get this to work for me. The other problem I have is that if you build up too much of it, it gets kind of goopy. It takes a while to dry and it does dry, but if there's too much of it, it becomes like a thick layer. And as I blink, it starts to flake off. Because this is kind of like a flaky product and it does kind of stick to itself on the lid, it can flake and chunk off. And then I have a whole spot where it's missing, so I can't just go in with a brush, pick up a little bit more and put it on, because then it's wet on top of dry product, which is, like, it's a whole situation. I can't get this to look good for more than two or three hours before it completely starts to fall apart. Is it beautiful? Yes. Is it a complete mood? Absolutely. Is it fun to, like, stick your fingers in? Yeah. Is it wearable? I can't get it to work for me. There were two mascaras that I tried this year that were epic fails for me. And I know mascara is like foundation or concealer. Um, we're all looking for something different because our lashes are very different person to person. And you know, my lash struggles are different from somebody else's. Um, here's what didn't work for me. The first thing that was a epic no-go was the Sky High from Maybelline in the black packaging. I picked it up because it's a tubing mascara. I love the tubing mascaras because they don't smudge, they don't flake. This one did not smudge or flake on me. Loved that. And I like mascaras like that for the days that I'm at work um, because I know I can count on it. There will be no transfer. I won't have any gray dots here. I will have no raccoon eyes. I'm not gonna have any flaking. It's gonna be perfect mascara all day. My struggle with that was getting it off. I don't know what like superpower it had. There was cement in there. I don't know. I could not get it all off with a cleansing balm, with a cleansing oil, with regular face wash. Like I do a double cleanse where I will take a cleansing balm and then I will rinse my face and then I'll go back in with like a foaming face wash. Mm -mm. There was none of that. I had to get to the point where I did that and then I took a Q-tip dipped in biphase eye makeup remover and kind of went around my eyes. And at the minute I have to start doing that, and then I'd wake up in the morning and I would still have gray under my eyes. It was just like the most powerful, like if you want something that's not gonna budge, that's your mascara. The other one, it was the price. It was the price. It was Le Wheat Heap Nose Mascara from Lancome. It's their new, it's also a tubing formula. Um, I found that it dried out really quickly. The packaging is really beautiful, but I don't care how beautiful your packaging is if you don't last. And what I'm saying is it stayed on my lashes all day. The problem I had was within two weeks of opening the package, it was like it was all dried out. It's like I couldn't get anything out of it and I was trying to get it on my lashes. And I was like, I paid $32 for a two week experience? No. <laughs> I was, I was a little bit miffed. And, and for me, it's one of those things where I love every single Lancome mascara I've tried. Some I love more than others, but I feel like Lancome does mascaras really well. Is it a pretty mascara? Yes, it's definitely more natural looking. It's very soft and fluffy. It also is one of the few mascaras that when you put it on, if you were to ever touch your lashes, it would feel like you have nothing on. It wouldn't be kind of thick 
or hard because like some mascaras really leave a layer and they're kind of pokey and spiky not la wheat hypnose it's really soft it's really beautiful it's really natural easy to take off because it's a tubing mascara but the fact that it like dried out so quickly and i could only get like a good look out of it for two weeks after that i kept trying to use it mm, i don't know it was too expensive with very little payoff for me so for me that was like a Nope. The last product that I don't have with me because I, I can't find it. I was looking through my drawer and I'm like, where did it go? I don't think I decluttered it, but it is so small I might have lost it. And it's the Surat Beauty Artistique Blush. Now, I didn't purchase this like this is the shade I want. It came in my Beautylish Lucky Bag. And here's what I'll tell you. And I might be trying the wrong things from the Surat line, but I have tried like three or four things and everything has been like, okay. I want to love it. It should be amazing. I just am not getting what you're laying down. I don't get it. It doesn't work for me. Now, I think that this was a, you know, a situation where it was the lightest blush. It was so light. It was so palely peachy. It was like almost not there. And maybe if it was more of an editorial look where you wanted the smallest hint of blush, but almost none at all, it would have been perfect for that. But I'm a, I'm a, blush lover. I, I want a lot of blush and I could not get that to show up on my face. I kept trying and I kept trying. I used several different blushes. I even used a sponge one time where I like dragged a sponge across and was like I couldn't get it to work for me. That's the last product that I don't physically have to show you. Everything else in my bin here are lip products. Okay so this is one where I love the product on the inside but it had to go in this just for the packaging fail. It's this. Okay, do you see, I already have a crack here and, and all of the gold trim is like, this is not the sort of thing that's bouncing around inside like a really, like it's not getting scuffed up because it's in with like 40 million of the things in a bag. This is, if this goes in my purse, it goes inside like a zipped area and it doesn't have anything else to bump up against. This is the sort of thing that I'll carry in my pocket. And maybe it might get worn a little bit, but I, I don't understand how this is so broken down. The other thing that's interesting is that here, there should also in gold be the M logo and like it says M Cosmetics underneath it. I'll, I'll put a picture up for you for what it should look like. Mm -mm. No, 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 that didn't happen. I do like, like that it's short and that it's chubby. I do like that you have a window here so you see how much you have. And the product is really nice. I do even like the angled doe foot. This is the Everglass Lip Dew. It is so shiny. This is the shade Enchant. I, I remember seeing promo photos and in the promo photo, this one looked and was described as kind of like a rose nude. And it's not. I would say it's definitely more warm toned and it's more of like a caramely nude and maybe maybe I was looking at the wrong shade but I bought this one specifically because I thought it was going to be a rose nude I have been using it it is comfortable it does feel good on the lips it doesn't do my cardinal sin for a lip gloss which is to kind of settle into the corners collect and string and pull it's really nice I just hate with my whole heart all the problems I've had with the packaging, that the, you know, label is gone, that it cracked, that all of this gold, it just looks like the cheapest thing ever. The product on the inside is good. This packaging is the worst. I picked up two of these Maybelline Green Edition Balmy Lip Blushes and the way they were described, they were supposed to be sheer. They were supposed to be glossy. They were supposed to be like, like a lip gloss and stick form. They were supposed to be hydrating. No. Um, I did find that I used uh, the shade in lightning a little bit more than the other one. And I always love like a nude shade. Does that look hydrating to you? It's almost matte. It's almost matte. And this is one of those products and it's called a balmy lip blush. It's not balmy. It's kind of dry. And uh, this shade here, this one is in spring. I've been looking for like a sheer kind of red. This is more magenta than red. This is one of the more vibrant colors in the collection. I just don't like this formula. I wouldn't recommend this to anybody. There are better glossy products at the drugstore. These are not what you want. Another product that was supposed to be glowy and hydrating and beautiful were these Glow Paradise lipsticks from L'Oreal. 
I, I really wanted to love these. I really did, because I love, absolutely adore the Glow Paradise Gloss. <gasps> that is some good stuff. And I was like, oh, look, let's try. And I went out and I bought three of them all at once. These are definitely more of those slightly sheer, these maybe a little bit of nourishment, not a lot. I just didn't like these at all. I didn't like the colors. Here's another one. I didn't like the colors. I didn't really like the texture. I didn't find that they were particularly nourishing. And maybe you'll find a shade here that you like, but all of these were very forgettable for me. Um, these are the sort of products that I, I kept using them. I would keep them in my scrubs pocket at work. They do seem like they would be comfortable. I like that they're sheer, so they deal well with me pulling my mask down at work, throwing some on and keep going. But I found by the end of the day, they weren't nourishing. They weren't comfortable. And the fact that they're supposed to be, you know, like these glowy, glossy lipsticks. If you are looking for a glowy, glossy lipstick from L'Oreal, the Colorish Plump or Plump and Shine, these are really great. I think these are a much better version of this. This is like what this wants to be when it grows up. Don't get these. I was so sad about these. These are the Un Lipstick from Beauty Pie. This is their attempt to create a blotted matte lipstick that's hydrating and comes in refillable packaging. So you could take it out, put another one in. I love the idea of refillable packaging. I would love to see them do that with some of their other formulas, but this on lipstick formula did not work for me. The first problem I had, I bought four of them, was that it broke. This is not the first one that broke. This is the second one that broke. The first one that broke was the red one in Cherry Cherry and it broke like as I was doing the try on video. I got three quarters of my lipstick on and then the last part when I was finishing up the bottom lip, I felt it wobbling. I twisted it up and it fell right in my lap. I got lipstick in my clothes and I was not happy. And then as I was going through talking about favorites, I was talking about, okay, maybe uh, that one formula in red didn't work well. Here's my favorite shade, nothing on this one's grit. And as I was putting it on and swatching it, it snapped. And I was like, I've had these lipsticks for three weeks and two out of the four of them have broken. And from that point, here's the thing. When you are touting your business to be a luxury products at affordable prices and then you charge $12 for a refill and $8 for the packaging together it's a $20 lipstick maybe compared to a super luxury brand that's an affordable lipstick but $20 is not affordable in anybody's world I don't think I can get like lipsticks for less than $10 at the drugstore that aren't going to snap off on me all right Okay, maybe when it comes to refillable packaging, you know, I'm thinking Charlotte Tilbury, I'm thinking um, Dior or Guerlain, like there are other brands that have refillable packaging, Clay de Poe, yeah, they're less expensive than those, but they don't perform on that level. Okay, so beyond the fact that they break and they don't last very long, let's talk about other problems. The brand claims that these are creamy, that these are hydrating, and that these melt on contact. And I say no <laughs> to all of that. All right, so this one here is Sheer Mocha, and that's one swipe. Do you see how it skips a little bit? And I would say that if you're melting on contact, you're not gonna be skipping. The other thing that I'm noticing here, and it happens even more like distinctly on my lips, is you see how there are some areas where there's darker pigment and less in other areas. I could keep going over this same patch over and over and over again, and I'm still gonna have areas that are darker and more pigment than in others. Okay, fine. And I was hoping that smushing my lips together would give me a little bit more of a blend, and it does, but you still have areas where it's kind of streaky. This is not nourishing. I would say it doesn't dry your lips out, but it doesn't provide any nourishment. And the line about it melting on contact, no, not at all. Not at all. On top of that, this is supposed to be a matte. It is matte. It is a little bit blurring, but it's also a little bit powdery in feel. I really like this shade in Sheer Mocha, but this product, like the Cherry Cherry, does the same thing where because they are darker shades, let me put Cherry Cherry on for you. This is the other one that broke. Because I am older, almost 48 years old, I do have these deep vertical lines in my lips. 
fine, no problem. That's where I'm at in the stage of life. I'm okay with that. But I don't want products like this to settle into those and really accentuate the lines. I feel like you can see the lines here with this lip product I'm wearing today, but it doesn't, these guys settle in and all of a sudden all the pigment lands in there. So I have a really thin layer and then a lot in the lines. And all you could see are these darkened vertical lines. I did not like that. This was not the sort of product that's supposed to make you look blurred and softened. No, maybe the lighter shades. The two shades that look nice enough on my lips are this one here and Nothing On and this one here in Crushed Petal. I love the shades of these, but they just make my lips look older. I, I wouldn't recommend this lipstick. I don't feel like for it's touting an affordable, it's not affordable. On top of that, formulation breaks. Um, I wouldn't ever want to recommend a lipstick to you that you're gonna have for a while, which is regular wear is gonna snap off at the base. And then what do you do with like a broken nub of a lipstick? Yeah, don't buy these. I wanted to love this so much. This is a Generation G lipstick from Glossier. It basically is described as what these beauty pie lipsticks are. It's supposed to be matte. It's supposed to be blotted. It doesn't really talk about it being comfortable and I really, really love this shade. I got the shade Fuzz. This is a new color for 2022. I love this color. It's so pretty. I actually really like this lipstick, but the only time I can wear this is if I pair it with a hydrating balm. Um, sometimes I've been pairing it with the Balm.com and Swiss Miss, which I love. They work beautifully together, but this dries my lips out. This is made for somebody who doesn't have lips that are as dry as mine. Maybe 10 years ago, this would have been great for me. Um, maybe when they first launched this formula, I could have gotten it to work. But in the last two years, I really feel like my lips are so much drier and I need something that's hydrating. I need something that's comfortable. Um, and it's, for me, it's the formulation that's dry. So if you have dry lips, I would not recommend this. If you don't, I love how sheer these are. I love how they look like almost, I feel like this is a better version of what Beauty Pie was trying to do. These look really good on the lips. And even when I put this on by itself, it looks really pretty. It's just, it's just not hydrating enough for me to use it without using it in tandem with something else. The last product that was a complete and total fail for me, and this is probably gonna be unpopular because some people really love this. <laughs> And I think it comes down to what we're expecting from products and what we're hoping they're going to do was this. This is the Dior Transfer Proof Matte Lipstick. I wanted to love this. I wanted to love this so much because it, this is supposed to be 16 hour wear. It's supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to leave your lips supple all day. Mm -mm. And on top of that, it's not supposed to transfer off onto anything. It says even fabric. So when you say even fabric, that means that if I am pulling a shirt up over my lips, I'm not gonna get any transfer. If I'm blotting my lips, and I'm not wiping, but blotting my lips at dinner time with a cloth napkin, I'm not gonna get any transfer. Guess who shows up on my dinner napkin? I use cloth napkins in my house. Yes, this one. <laughs> this right here is a beautiful, like look at that insane pigment i love that i love that it's like slimline package it comes out it looks beautiful but this is the most high maintenance red and i'm sure it's the way it's formulated another pet peeve i have is the packaging because if you don't put it on just right it's not going to go down it's not a perfect square it's a little bit rectangular and one day i wasn't very careful do you see that we have a little white mark here a little stress mark same thing on the other side, right here. And it comes from not putting it on exactly the way it's supposed to fit and trying to force it because I'm in a rush. Make it perfectly square or make it so obvious that I couldn't put it on the wrong way because when I was looking at these in Sephora, guess what? They were cracked, the caps were cracked all the way up the top, like, like up to like three quarters of the cap was cracked. And all I could think of is for a $42 lipstick, I want this to be beautiful and perfect from start to finish. So the packaging for me, I don't really love the fact that the cap is a different size. It's not perfectly square. Now, when it comes to the formulation, I love how bold and intense it is. It swipes on, it's creamy, it doesn't drag. But guess what? When this dries down, the problem I have is that right here, where my lip goes right towards the inside of my lip, where it can be a little bit wet, where it can have uh, saliva on it, nothing sticks to that. 
Now I have other formulas that do fine there. This one does not. Being that it is a bright, bold color, the place where it doesn't stick and you see a flesh-toned ring right in the middle of my lips here, that's kind of, you can't unsee that. If it was a neutral color, it would be fine. But beyond that, I found that when I pressed my lips together, like this, I would get product sticking to itself. Product from the top would stick to the bottom and somewhere around there, I would have like a little patchy hole. Now you can reapply this over the top of itself, but I had to reapply so much to get this to look perfect. It was really hard. The other problem I had was that I tried this one day on a work day. I work at a dentist's office. I'm in a mask all day when I'm with patients and it's transfer proof and uh, no transferring to fabrics. That's not true under a mask. This, this might work for some people, I could not get it to work for me. I had my mask on and as I was talking, cause I'm talking to patients while I'm taking x-rays, while I'm assisting with a filling, while we're putting a crown in, whatever it is that we're doing that day, if I'm doing a cleaning, I have this lipstick on and when I took my mask off at lunch, I had clown mouth. And for me, clown mouth is where, you know, you're wearing a color and it's not just slightly blurred around the edge. It's like full on like, like a four year old put it on and there was no care given to wear your vermilion border is. There's no lip line, there's just color everywhere. And then it was, <laughs> it wears for a long time. So I had color where I didn't want it. Um, so it does transfer to cloth napkins. It does transfer to a mask. Um, it does really, really dry my lips out. It's claim of being hydrating and supple, it's not. And it could just be my lips, but I didn't find that this did anything to nourish my lips. Okay, you don't have to be nourishing, but don't suck the life out of them. This sucked the life out of them. The other thing is, because I do have a lot of, you know, lines in my lips, the older I get, this really accentuated that. And then on top of that, the claim of 16 hours, no. I think the only way this would work for 16 hours is if I were to put it on and to lay flat on the bed and do nothing. You know, not eat, not drink. Um, and, and like most long wear products, this is getting broken down by oil. So greasy salad dressing, if you're having a burger, a slice of pizza, a soup that has any amount of oil in it, that's all gonna be a problem. But um, is it a bad lipstick? No. Is it a high maintenance red? Yes. This basically comes down to, for the price, it's too expensive of a lipstick to be as high maintenance as it is and to not deliver on the claims that it makes. All right, there you go. Those were the worst products I tried this year. Now, there are some products that I didn't absolutely love but weren't like horrible offenders. These were the ones that I really couldn't get out of my mind. These were the bad ones in my estimation. If I talk about any of your favorites, I hope you'll realize that maybe we all use makeup a little bit differently and what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. Thank you so much for watching today. I would love to know what products you tried this year that just were not doing it. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I'll see you again soon.